Climate change in the United Kingdom has been a subject of protest and controversies and various policies have been developed to mitigate its effects. The government has a commitment to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by the United Kingdom by 50% on 1990 levels by 2025 and by 80% on 1990 levels by 2050. In May 2019, Parliament declared a climate change emergency, however this does not legally compel the government to act. Topic. Emissions The emissions for 2012 were 581 mtCO2e in total and 7.7 .7 tons per capita. Carbon dioxide CO2 emissions have reduced 17% from 1990 to 2012 compared to 21% in Germany. Import related emissions of the United Kingdom were 35% in 1992 and 67% in 2004. Consumer emissions have risen steadily over the period 1992 to 2004 and are in 2004 18% higher than in 1992, while the national total emissions reported to the UNFCCC in 1992 to 2004 have declined by 5%. According to reports, 40% of the emissions in the UK come from individuals, energy being used up in homes, motor vehicle driving, and air travel. Almost a decade ago, UK had passed the Climate Change Act which requires the ministers to cut down the carbon emissions by 80% till 2050. The Committee on Climate Change, an independent body which advises the UK and devolved government, publish annual progress reports in respect to control the climate change in the United Kingdom. Meeting future carbon budgets UK will require reducing emissions by at least 3% a year. According to the report in June 2013 emissions of greenhouse gases increased by 3.5% in 2012 due to cold winter compared to 2011 and coal in power generation. UK 594 mtCO2e emissions by sectors in 2011 were 24% power, 19% industry, 18% land transport, 14% buildings, CA1% agriculture and LULUCF and CA1% aviation. Emission increase was biggest in aviation, air transport in the United Kingdom CO2 emissions increased from CA17 mtCO2 in 1990 to 35 mtCO2 in 2011. Topic: <laughs> peat UK peatlands cover around 23,000 square kilometres or 9.5% of the UK land area and store at least 3.2 billion tonnes of carbon. A loss of only 5% of UK peatland carbon would equate to the total annual UK anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions. Healthy peat bogs have a net long-term cooling effect on the climate. Peatlands rely on water. When drained, peatlands waste away through oxidation, adding carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Damaged and degraded peatlands place a substantial financial burden on society because of increased greenhouse gas emissions, poorer water quality and loss of other ecosystem services. <laughs> <laughs> Legislation There is in place national legislation, international agreements and the EU directives. The EU Directive 2001-77, EU promotes renewable energy in the electricity production. The Climate Change and Sustainable Energy Act 2006 is an act of the Parliament of the United Kingdom which aims to boost the number of heat and electricity microgeneration installations in the United Kingdom, so helping to cut carbon emissions and reduce fuel poverty. The Climate Change Act 2008 makes it the duty of the Secretary of State to ensure that the net UK carbon account for all six Kyoto greenhouse gases for the year 2050 is at least 80% lower than the 1990 baseline. In May 2019, Parliament approved a motion declaring a national climate change emergency. This does not legally compel the government to act, however. Stern Review The British government and the economist Nicholas Stern published the Stern Review on the economics of climate change in 2006. The report states that climate change is the greatest and widest-ranging market failure ever seen, presenting a unique challenge for economics. 
The review provides prescriptions including environmental taxes to minimize economic and social disruptions. The Stern Review's main conclusion is that the benefits of strong, early action on climate change far outweigh the costs of not acting. The review points to the potential impacts of climate change on water resources, food production, health, and the environment. According to the review, without action, the overall costs of climate change will be equivalent to losing at least 5% of global gross domestic product GDP each year, now and forever. Including a wider range of risks and impacts could increase this to 20% of GDP or more. No one can predict the consequences of climate change with complete certainty, but we now know enough to understand the risks. The review leads to a simple conclusion, the benefits of strong, early action considerably outweigh the costs. Stern's review came in for much criticism at the time. Sir Partha Dasgupta, Frank Ramsey Professor of Economics at Cambridge University said that Stern's assumptions would require the current generation to save 97.5 cents of every dollar produced, so patently absurd that we must reject it out of hand. The cause is not served when parameter values are so chosen that they yield the desired answers. William Nordhaus, an economist from Yale, said the Stern Review should be read primarily as a document that is political in nature and has advocacy as its purpose. This assessment seems to be justified by this statement with within the review itself, much of public policy is actually about changing attitudes. Politics The Climate Change Programme was launched in November 2000 by the British government in response to its commitment agreed at the 1992 United Nations Conference on Environment and Development. London Green 500 is a programme to reduce the carbon emissions of the London City organisations including new building by 60% by 2025. Urban areas account for 75% of world CO2 emissions, but less than 1% of the Earth's surface. <laughs> <laughs> Energy alternatives Friends of the Earth, Greenpeace and the RSPB The Royal Society for the Protection of Birds wrote in 2013, why government plans to subsidize burning trees are bad news for the planet. According to Princeton academic Timothy Searchinger the use of whole trees may increase greenhouse gas emissions by at least 49% compared to using coal over 40 years. Topic. Extreme weather. By 2014 the United Kingdom's seven warmest and four out of its five wettest years had occurred between the years of 2000 to 2014. Higher temperatures increase evaporation and consequently rainfall. In 2014 England recorded its wettest winter in over 250 years with widespread flooding. <laughs> Floods. According to the government the number of households in the flood risk will be up to 970,000 homes in the 2020s, up from around 370,000 in January 2012. The Friends of the Earth criticized British government of the intended cuts to flood defense spending. The protection against increasing flood risk as a result of climate change requires rising investment. In 2009, the Environment Agency calculated that UK need to be spending £20 million more compared to 2010-11 as the baseline, each and every year out to 2035, just to keep pace with climate change, according to the Met Office figures for December 2013 and January 2014 combined were the wettest since records began in 1910. The effects of flooding and managing flood risk cost the country about £2.2 billion a year, compared with the less than £1 billion spent on flood protection and management. In February 2014, during the British flooding, the Church of England said that it will pull its investments from companies that fail to do enough to fight the great demon of climate change and ignore the Church's theological, moral, and social priorities. Heat Year 2014 is estimated as England's hottest year in over 350 years with climate change contribution. <laughs> UK Carbon Neutral Plan 
The UK is legally bound by the Climate Change Act to reduce emissions 80% by 2050, but a new law mandating a 100% cut is under discussion in 2019. According to the Committee on Climate Change, the UK can cut its carbon emissions down to near zero and so become carbon neutral, at no extra cost if done gradually from 2019 to 2050. Renewable energy New wind power is expected to be installed 1 to 1.5 gigawatts onshore and 1 to 2 gigawatts offshore annually in 2008 to 2022. Figure 7 of the document shows the UK target to increase the share of renewable energy from 2008 to 2020 and the increase in the energy efficiency. The 2009 Renewable Energy Directive sets a target for the UK to achieve 15% of its energy consumption from renewable sources by 2020. This would see around 30% of electricity, 12% of heat and 10% of transport energy come from renewable sources by 2020. Topic: Lobbying. A number of lobby groups in the UK focus on climate change including Friends of the Earth who ran the Big Ask campaign, Stop Climate Chaos Coalition, the UK Youth Climate Coalition, Campaign Against Climate Change, Extinction Rebellion, and 350.org. <laughs> Climatic Research Unit email controversy The Climatic Research Unit email controversy also known as Climate Gate began in November 2009 with the hacking of a server at the Climatic Research Unit CRU at the University of East Anglia by an external attacker Several weeks before the Copenhagen Summit on Climate Change an unknown individual or group breached CRU's server and copied thousands of emails and computer files to various locations on the internet the story was first broken by climate change critics on their blogs, with columnist James Dellingpole popularizing the term climate gate to describe the controversy. Climate change critics and others denying the significance of human-caused climate change argued that the emails showed that global warming was a scientific conspiracy, in which they alleged that scientists manipulated climate data and attempted to suppress critics. The accusations were rejected by the CRU, who said that the emails had been taken out of context and merely reflected an honest exchange of ideas. The mainstream media picked up the story as negotiations over climate change mitigation began in Copenhagen on 7 December. Because of the timing, scientists, policy makers and public relations experts said that the release of emails was a smear campaign intended to undermine the climate conference. In response to the controversy, the American Association for the Advancement of Science AAAS, the American Meteorological Society and the Union of Concerned Scientists released statements supporting the scientific consensus that the Earth's mean surface temperature had been rising for decades. Eight committees investigated the allegations and published reports, finding no evidence of fraud or scientific misconduct. However, the reports called on the scientists to avoid any such allegations in the future by taking steps to regain public confidence in their work, for example by opening up access to their supporting data, processing methods and software, and by promptly honoring freedom of information requests. The scientific consensus that global warming is occurring as a result of human activity remained unchanged throughout the investigations. Controversial screening of a climate change film in state schools Dimmock v. Secretary of State for Education and Skills was a case heard in September to October 2007 in the High Court of Justice of England and Wales, concerning the permissibility of the government providing Al Gore's climate change documentary An Inconvenient Truth to English State Schools as a teaching aid. The case was brought by Stuart Dimmock, a lorry HGV driver and school governor from Kent, England, a father of two sons who attend a state school. Dimmock has twice stood as a local election candidate for the New Party and received backing for the case from Viscount Monckton, the author of the New Party's manifesto. Monckton, one of the UK's most prominent climate change skeptics, launched an advertising campaign against Al Gore in March, 2007 challenging Gore to a public debate on climate change. 
Moncton has received funding from a Washington based conservative think tank of which he is chief policy advisor, the Science and Public Policy Institute, to create a film, Apocalypse No, which will parody Gore, showing Moncton presenting a slideshow making an attack on climate change science. The plaintiff sought to prevent the educational use of an inconvenient truth on the grounds that schools are legally required to provide a balanced presentation of political issues. The court ruled that the film was substantially founded upon scientific research and fact and could continue to be shown, but it had a degree of political bias such that teachers would be required to explain the context via guidance notes issued to schools along with the film. The court also identified nine of what the plaintiff called errors in the film which were departures from the scientific mainstream, and ruled that the guidance notes must address these items specifically. Topic. See also Carbon governance in England Climate change in Scotland Climate change in the European Union Climate change in Europe Climate of the United Kingdom London Climate Change Agency Committee on Climate Change IPCC Four Degrees and Beyond International Climate Conference subtitled Implications of a Global Climate Change of Four Plus Degrees for People, Ecosystems and the Earth System, held on 28-30 September 2009 at Oxford, United Kingdom. Stratospheric Particle Injection for Climate Engineering Benny Pazer, an outspoken climate change skeptic. <laughs>